We're going to pick up here from where we left off in Chapter 4, and I'm going to just highlight a few places uh, and direct you so that you can think about the question that I want you to answer in the blog prompt today. So here we are. Dill has finally arrived back in Maycomb. And he arrives and starts telling stories about how he had helped the engineer for a while, said Dill, yawning. In a pig's ear you did, Dill. Hush, said Jem. What do we play today? So he's back in 10 seconds. They're ready to have a game, whatever game, because this is all about play. It's summer now, and that's the best time. So they begin talking about the game they've always played. Uh, acting out different skits from different books and plays that they know. And very quickly they decide that they're tired of this and that they need some new stories and some new things to do. Scout says in here, our first days of freedom and we were tired. I wondered what the summer would bring. So that didn't look good. There they are, have all this freedom from the summer, and they're already bored. Not a good thing. So they're out there, now they're in front of the Radley place, and Dill is talking about this odd thing that he seems to know about, and he says, I smell death. He said, I do, I mean it. And, of course, it's Dill up to his stories, but he begins to talk then about this thing called hot steams. And hot steams apparently are when you're out and you're walking and you notice that there's this hot steamy place that you walk through or nearby and uh, the kids would say you need to stay away from there. A hot steam is something like a uh, spirit, right, or a ghost. And if you walk through it, it's going to get you. And uh, when you die, then the same thing will happen to you. Very scary. We need to think a little bit about the kids' beliefs again here. Um, I'm trying to direct you that way so that you can begin to ask more questions about what makes these kids alive to us, for one thing, as we read about them. But what's on their minds? What do, they, what do they really believe about life and where do these beliefs come from? Where did this thing about hot steams, where do you think that came from? All right, so we go on with this section and they decide they're going to play something else here. And they decide to have a game of roll in the tire. And guess who needs gets to be rolled in the tire? That would be Scout. You have to imagine this. I don't know if you uh, have seen very, very large tires, uh, maybe from a tractor. And sometimes kids will get on in the inside of this. Remember, it's just the, the outside. It's like the tread of a tire. So they'll get on the inside of that and brace themselves in it, and then someone will stand the tire up and roll it so it rolls down the street. And this is what they do with Scout. And pretty soon, there she is. She's rolling, rolling, rolling. And guess where she ends up? Of course, she ends up in the front yard of the Radley home. Where down here and she quickly, once she senses where she is, she gets up, runs out uh, without the tire. So Jem, of course, has to go back to rescue the tire and bring it with him. Uh, right after this, Calpurnia calls and tells them to come get lemonade. A favorite thing for them in the summer, this would have been a real treat on a hot summer afternoon. So as they're sitting, sipping their lemonade, Dill devises a new play. And they're going to play Boo Radley. Of course, they're going to play Boo Radley because they're all obsessed with Boo Radley. 
Yes, obsessed with Boo Radley, so of course they're going to invent a play. And in this play, they're going to act out different parts. Uh, Scout is, is not uh, as keen on doing this as the boys are. And uh, Jem assures him her that it's it's okay. Jem thinks he's dead anyway. That uh, he's stuffed him up the chimney somewhere. So they're gonna go ahead and invent their play, and they do this over the afternoons over several days. So it takes them some many afternoons to perfect this little play that they have going. Again, we come back to Dill being uh, very important in Jem and Scout's life. Very much part a, of a leader there in their plays. And it says here that Dill was a villain's villain. That just means he was really good at uh, pretending to be any character that was assigned to him. And a really good, uh, a really good bad guy. So they go on with inventing this and pretend that um, they are the Radley family and they enact this melancholy little drama. Melancholy means very sad, woven from bits and scraps of gossip and neighborhood legend. Be sure to think about that. Gossip and neighborhood legend. This is where they're getting their information, right? We'll need to think more about that in a little while. Mrs. Radley had been beautiful until she married Mr. Radley and lost all her money. She also lost most of her teeth, her hair, and her right forefinger. Of course, you know, they're making this up, right? Some is based on things they've heard, but they are largely making up the details here. Uh, let's go on. She sat in the living room and cried most of the time while Boo slowly whittled away all the furniture in the house. Whittled is a verb that means uh, carved away. The three of us were the boys who got into trouble. I was the probate judge for a change. Dill led Jem away and crammed him beneath the steps, poking him with the brush broom. Jim would reappear as needed in the shapes of the sheriff, assorted townsfolk, and Miss Stephanie Crawford, who had more to say about the Radleys than anybody in Maycomb. When it was time to play Boo's big scene, Jim would sneak into the house, steal the scissors from the sewing machine drawer when Calpurnia's back was turned, then sit in the swing and cut up newspapers. Dill would walk by, cough at Jim, and Jim would fake a plunge into Dill's thigh. From where I stood, it looked real. All right, let's think about this play that the kids are having. And I want you to think about what it means that their play and their games uh, are suggesting. What is this suggesting about what they believe? What does it tell us about the community that they've grown up in? We know that Atticus and Calpurnia, too, have been trying to teach them about how prejudice is wrong and how they should treat people well and kindly. But there they are having this play and we need to do some thinking about what that means. Finally, they're, they're getting um, to the end of their play and who walks up but Atticus. And uh, we need to remember Atticus, of course, is an attorney. He is going to make keen observations. And this doesn't get past him, not at all. He sees what they're doing with the scissors and has a pretty good idea that they are inventing this play about the Radley family. And he's going to go on to tell them to stop it in no uncertain terms. And they lie. Jem lies and says, no, of course he's not, not doing that. So some ideas for us to think about here. Uh, as we turn our attention again to children's games and play, what does it suggest about their beliefs? Uh, the acting out of the Boo Radley story. 
the obsession about Vu and how Atticus is trying to rein them in a little bit and turn them in the direction of some other kind of play.